This week on episode 510 of Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D., we talk the 2024 Disney Plus show X-Men 97, specifically season one, episode nine, Tolerance's Extinction, part two. I'm Damien the DM from Adventures in Aurelia, a collaborative storytelling experience told through a game of Dungeons and Dragons, part of the Gunna Geek Network, just like the show you're checking out now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other epically geeky shows at GunnaGeekNetwork.com. Raised on X-Men, empowered by the Avengers, strengthened by the Defenders, webbed by Spider-Man, adopted by the Fantastic Four, and forged by S.H.I.E.L.D. Stand by for your Marvel debriefing. And now it's time for your Marvel debriefing. I'm Agent Lauren. I'm Agent Michelle. I'm Agent Chris. And I'm producer of the show, Director SP. Welcome to Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. This show was recorded on Saturday, May 11th, 2024, live from the Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. studios and broadcast deep inside your mind. Come join us on our live chat as we record. And Michelle... What are we talking about this week? This week, we are talking about Tolerance is Extinction Part 2. The X-Men work to settle the score before it is too late. Overall thoughts. Lauren, what do you think? I mean, you can only try to wipe out a group so many times before it gets taken personally. Chris? I thought I knew what was happening, and apparently I have no idea what's happening, and I'm okay with that. Michelle? I can't believe they brought that moment from the comics into the show. All I can say is this has been pretty intense ever since Remember It. We're going to start talking about our favorite two boyfriends, Magneto and Charles. And what's going on between the two of them, Michelle? The daddies are breaking up. (laughs) We... (laughs) We can't have this. This is just too much. I mean, they were apart for so long, and now when they reunite, they're getting into a big old argument. It's a lot. Daddy Charles was gone, and Daddy Magneto kept the whole family together, and now Daddy Charles is back, but they're they're just fighting, and everybody is picking sides, and I don't like it. They're not just picking sides. They cause full-fledged family feuds. Yeah, I was trying to think of an example of like a celebrity couple that's constantly breaking up and getting back together. And it's very early for me, so it, none's coming to mind, but they are definitely that couple. Yeah, so we end the part one last week with Magneto sending out a pulse. And we really didn't understand the entire consequences of that, right? I didn't, at least. And apparently he's caused the Earth's magnetic field to completely fail in about 12 hours. That's what I took from it. I'm with you on that. That's definitely what they made it sound like. What I wasn't expecting was full on, oh, hey, all the electricity's out forever. What was that show? It was on NBC for a while. I don't even want to. But that was like the premise. and Yeah. Revolution. Revolution. That's the one. The one with the dad from Twilight. Yeah, it's kind of like that, where there's no electricity anymore. And then the other thing that I completely got wrong, I guess, but I can't blame myself because I went back to the episode one and and tried to see what was going on. It was like when Bastion inputted his, I don't know what they were called, nanites, cybernetics, whatever, into everybody, I thought the magnetic pulse might have cured everybody, and it didn't. They're all still the same way, and they're motionless now, and I guess questions mom was crying or whatever i didn't understand exactly what was going on with humanity so i think them not shutting completely down makes sense because it's the whole techno organic virus so yeah part of it is mechanical but part of it's biological bastion was the one that was crying oh i thought i saw tears on his mom's face Okay. Right. He was crying because he was he was carrying his mom and tears got on her face from him. Okay. So is she dead? 
Might I as well be. Don't know. Yeah, I I don't know what's going on. I it just it's so convoluted, and I just don't know if it's because I'm dense. I don't have the background in the comics, or if it's because I haven't done a great job of explaining exactly what's going on. Well, to be fair, they kind of changed up that character from the comics, like a little bit. Hmm. So. And I mean, let's summarize real quick how they're following the comics. They're taking the cool things from different stories and mixing it all up. So it doesn't really matter if you know a specific story. Yeah. And yeah, we'll get to the rest of that later. So, Michelle, we have Magneto. We talked about him and Charles already, but he's uh, offering a choice. Yeah, after he, you know, gets back into his old duds. Looking all fine again. I like his old outfit. I can't help it. He brings back Asteroid M and he's just like, hey, you want a new home or you want to stay here? And Rogan Roberto actually leave with him, which surprised me a bit. But, you know, that's the picking of the sides. This is the family breaking up. I mean, it makes sense. We have Rogue, who's been increasingly disillusioned, especially after Gambit's death. But then she also has a history with Magneto. So that part checks out to me. And then Roberto, this is basically his first time getting mutant bashed, I guess. And to have it come kind of at the hands of his own family, that hurts. So he is understandably very upset. Surprised me that those were the only two that went with him. I don't know if I could pinpoint who else I would have expected to go with Magneto, but I was expecting more than just those two. I was kind of expecting Beast, but I don't know. Yeah, so Chris, uh, about choices. You know, there's there's making choices for for yourself and then there's there's making choices for other people too which it always seems to be a problem and it seems to be something that charles xavier is very very bad at the one here was that he chose to give magneto the school instead of cyclops and gene because he wanted them and he decided for them that they were going to be able to go off and live their life and do whatever it was they were going to do outside the school Who cares what they wanted to do? Who cares what they saw their future as? They're out. Magneto is in. And then Scott walks right past Charles. Can you blame him, though? This has been a really, really rough time for everybody. And Xavier was up in space with his, you know, bird fiance. And yeah, he was going through stuff, too, but. (sighs) He could have called. He could have called. They didn't have cell phones in 97, though. They had landlines and space technology. And he's psychic. Well, telepathic, but. Got a little bit more choice than the average person did back in the 1990s for communication. But Lauren, you also had, on the other hand, Magneto, and he's definitely made some choices and and wanting to uh, move on with things uh yeah i think it's fair to say he's had enough of thoughts and prayers at the moment the whole thing with him and xavier has always been xavier has gone very heavy on respectability politics you know look at us we're so nice and easy to get along with we are making ourselves palatable for you and magneto is the one who's no we're gonna be in your face we're gonna be reminding you of our presence at all times you are going to let us go our own way or you are going to you know suffer the consequences and while i think both sides do have excellent points we do kind of see the advantage of one point of view over another in the past i don't know three episodes especially yeah and so Once we get over the, let's make the choices, Magneto's going his path, Charles is trying to go his path, then we have the teams coming together, and there is some heartfelt conversations about how people are going to go forward, right, Michelle? 
Oh, where they are talking about trusting each other, where they need to decide, you know, Charles and Xavier are basically for them almost out of the picture because of the way Charles has treated them, the way Magneto has gone off now. They've decided, okay, we are going to take this fight ourselves. We are going to trust in each other in order to make the right choices, in order to do this fight. We're not going to give up. And that split into blue team and gold team, having Cyclops on one team, Jean Grey on the other, just those two trusting that they're going to be able to get their respective teams and the other person is going to be able to get their respective team to get their part of the job done, I think is a really big step for everybody. I really loved that conversation between Storm and Jean where it just, you see again, like these are people who have been through hell together. They love each other. They trust each other. And it's, it was beautiful. Something else that was beautiful were the duds here. I mean, the costumes, right, Chris? We're making some choices here. So first thing that popped into my mind was you have Roberto in the New Mutants costume and New Mutants can happen. Okay, let's make that happen. I don't expect it here in season one, but let's make it happen. But also you have everybody going back to their super old school uniforms, which included Jean going all the way back to Marvel Girl. and. Kaylee was wondering if maybe the new uniforms had some kind of electronic stuff in them or metal stuff in them so that Magneto could mess with it. I just thought they wanted to go back and feel like they were back in the old days when everybody was working together, making sure that everything got done the way it needed to get done. Rogue was also wearing that green and white outfit that she wore starting in like, what, the mid 2000s? Yeah, it was after X-Men movie that was, what, 1999, right? Yeah. Yeah, and there was also a kind of a joke about it, right? (laughs) Oh, this part cracked me up. You have Cyclops trying to awkwardly to be a good dad to Cable, handing him a uniform, and Cable's just kind of looking at it like, what? Cyclops turns around and goes, you were expecting black leather? Which is a really nice riff on the You're Expecting Yellow Spandex line from the 1999 movie. Indeed. I was delighted. Yep. So then we get to the big fight, which is, you know, it's three tiers again. You got fights going all over the place with teams and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, Michelle, we have some uh, 1v1s going on. Yeah, Mr. Sinister comes along and does a bunch of genetic jokes with Gene. I know your genes, Gene. I know when you were switched. I know when you were cloned. And it's quite the fight. I say this was the most, I keep on thinking that this is the most intense fight. This is the most intense fight. And it just keeps on leveling up to the point where I don't know where we're going to go next week on that. That's another topic of discussion. One thing that I've been thinking of increasingly since watching the episode is the fight between Jubilee and Roberto. You know, you've had these two being very close to each other, but suddenly they find themselves on different sides. He hits her with his powers for real. She gets mad. He gets mad because he said he's sorry. But it's, again, once you've chosen your sides, it's kind of hard to go back on that. But it goes all the way. I mean, you've got plating out stabbings, and you have the epic moment of Magneto and Wolverine. And Chris, you were talking about standards and practices last time. You know, there's no way in heck this makes it through the standards and practices from no. the 1990s. Not even off screen. No way. It almost didn't make it through standards or practices at my house. Kaylee legitimately got mad at me that I didn't warn her that this was happening. And I should have known. I know that Magneto ripping the adamantium straight out of Wolverine's body is a thing that happened in comics. I don't think anybody was expecting that to happen here. 
I especially wasn't expecting it to happen after Wolverine stabbed Magneto like that. And I double it wasn't expecting it to happen because Wolverine was strong enough to start the job like that. And then he just failed at finish it because he couldn't keep his mouth shut. Always has got to make those quips, bud. You make the quips while you finish your swipe. It's not that hard. Yeah, that was definitely a you should have gone for the head moment. So when I was a kid, my cousin, who was about a year older than me, got me into X-Men. And I remember I had started watching the show. We're sitting on the swing set in my yard and he had just bought the comic of when this happened. So he's there telling me the story and I'm there sitting wide eyed. So this particular aspect of Wolverine's backstory has always had that emotional attachment for me and seeing it in motion was horrifying. (laughs) It was pretty great. I mean, horrible, but great. It was gruesome as I can imagine the X-Men ever getting. And I think it goes back to the standards and practices, because if the standards and practices weren't there in the 1990s, we would have saw a lot of more grotesque things in the comics, let alone the movies. I mean, I think if this was live action, that that scene would have definitely tipped this into uh, a hard R rating, if not worse. If it was live action, that was just wow. Yeah, we've come a long way from having to trade, you know, the enemies using guns with bullets so that we could mention the Holocaust. Now it's just. All right, let's do it. This is definitely more of like a edging into a PG-13 show. I did find it interesting that you eventually got people with like powers that were kind of paired up to fight against each other and uh, if you go with somebody that's not your power there's always a weakness that you can exploit i mean morph turned into the hulk for instance what do you do with the hulk you can't really affect the hulk straight on so you have to take the hulk via other means which they did so or morph but morph has been the instrument of all these cameos that we've gotten this entire season and chris and no it's not on our list but you made a point about it early on in the season that you hope that all our cameos wouldn't come from more i don't think all of them have but i think a large majority of them have so are you okay with that it's a weird spot for me because while yes i want to see some of these actual characters show up i haven't had any problem with more being anybody it's always fit into the story it's always fit into the action. There's nothing where I've been sitting there and thought, oh man, why did Morph turn into them this time? It's stupid. It's not that I'm mad at them or could have been disappointed in them with any bit of it. It's that I wanted to see some of the actual characters come out and not just Morph doing it. Kind of speaks to the point, and I have no idea, I haven't looked into it, that Marvel Studios, Kevin Feige in particular, must have told them that Bo Mayo or whoever was making the choices that you can't change anything in the broader universe. That's why even the Spider-Man cameo that we got was him on, on a rooftop, and that was it, right? So that's the only thing I can think of, is that unless it's dealing with these characters that you have a large okay to deal with that we're not okaying that you bring anybody else into the scheme of things it's that's the only thing i can think of and honestly that level of cameo is all i'm expecting from any other character but it is really cool how we're seeing morph doing it yeah especially when morph turns into somebody who is already in the episode (laughs) okay anything else from here where do we go from here? I mean, this is, wow, this is, I don't know where this is going to end. And I'm wondering what kind of ending we're actually going to get, because it is renewed for season two, but I think they had to make the ending before they were renewed. So we're going to get some kind of an ending, but I don't know if it's going to be open-ended or not. So I'm not sure about where this is going to end directly, but I did find myself wondering about season two. 
we never got the onslaught storyline in the original run, did we? Not that I remember. Okay. The onslaught story has issues. So at first I was like, oh, I really hope they don't do that. But then, I mean, it's been long enough that I think they could maybe do some fresh takes on it. For those who don't know, Onslaught is basically Magneto and Xavier combined into one big nightmare. And yeah, the the original storyline was extremely controversial among at least the people I hang out with. But there's an interesting idea there, and especially after this episode, after that separation, I'd be really curious what they could actually do with it. They seem to be willing to move forward and not uh, Monster of the Week and reset, that's for sure. All right, Lauren, you had some shout outs last week that we didn't get to, but we're going to talk about voice actors from this week. Okay, so from this week, the only one that was really a new voice was Ron Rubin, who voiced President Kelly. He has been in a whole lot, but to me at least, he's best known as the voice of Artemis the Cat in the dub of Sailor Moon. And then from last week, so many. (laughs) So starting off with Theo James, who's voicing Bastion. Dude's an on-screen actor, but he was also in Castlevania. He's done a lot of voice work. I think that one's one of his strongest roles. You have Carrie Walgren as Rose, who you might remember on screen from the movie Anaconda. She was also Janet Van Dyne in Avengers Assemble. We have Travis Willingham making a short appearance as Sebastian Shaw. Again, he's in everything, but right now kind of best known for critical role. Christina Uhibe voiced Nina DaCosta. She is a Brazilian actress who is probably best known for the show The Light of My Eyes. And Anjali Bimani came on as one of the Omega Sentinels. Daria is the name of that Omega Sentinel. And she is probably best known for being Symmetra in Overwatch. All right. So the continuing theme of good known voice actors in the show. All right. My question for the week is basically. I could find anything to think of to reference back to other science fiction or comic book stuff that we had seen before. So I just went with the the ubiquitous uh, world's going to end in 12 hours. What are you going to do? So 12 hours, that's all you got left. What are you going to do? Chris? This is a family friendly show, but my wife will be involved. (laughs) (laughs) Look, I mean, if you're going to go out, go out on top or bottom, whatever your preference is. Um, I would probably be making a lot of efforts to reach out to people. Just let them know I love them. Yeah, unfortunately, commu- in I'm this boring. particular case, communications are, are not going to be possible. So, yeah. Yeah, in that case, I'd just kind of find someone to hug and stay there for a while, I think. I think that's kind of what Chris was getting at. Yeah. It's a yeah, special hug. Yeah. Michelle? Just be with my family and my cat. Yep. A lot of that going on. Just spend time with the people that you love. All right. Final thoughts for this for one last week before we get the finale next week. Michelle? I don't think season one will end on a happy note. Lauren? I keep getting angry all over again how the main themes of X-Men are still relevant in like every generation. (laughs) Chris? Instead of Beast asking what the sound of one hand clapping was, I was really, really hoping if he would ask what the five fingers said to the face. <laughs> I was hoping for a stop hitting yourself. Yeah, yeah. Beast had some one-liners in this one. And then I am going to postulate, are we actually going to get an ending or is this going to be one huge cliffhanger? I think we're going to get an ending just because season two wasn't renewed, but I don't know for sure. So we'll see what they had in mind. The other thing that I wanted to bring up before is that Bo is no longer with the show. So I don't know what kind of creative direction they're going to take for season two. It's might be 
different theme altogether. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, next time we are going to talk about the finale for X-Men 97 Season 1. Season 1, Episode 10. We're actually going, for those that watch us live, we're going to be on Sunday, not on Saturday, next week. And uh, more about the future of what's going on with Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. at that time. But in the meantime, Michelle, how can people get their inputs into us of what they think is going to happen in the finale? You can find more information about us on our website, legendsofshield.com. We would love to hear from you. We got a voicemail line, 844-THE-BUST-1. That's 844-843-2871. You can always join our Discord server at gunnageek.com slash Discord. And remember, Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a proud member of the gunnageek.com network. All right. Until next time, I'm SP. I'm going to be watching this episode a few more times, trying to figure out what happened. I'm Agent Lauren. I'm Agent Michelle. And I'm Agent Chris. See everybody next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Come back with the milk. Forge launched uh, another X-Jet. Fourth in four weeks. Did he remember to put the shielding on it, at least? I don't know. We didn't see the crash. How high do you think their insurance premiums are? $420 million. Thank you for listening. The intro music heard on this podcast is Great Marvels of the World by Lynn Publishing, found on Pond5.com. The outro music heard on this podcast is Cinematic Trailer by Ed Records, found on AudioJungle.net. Other transitional music on this podcast is found on Incompetech.com, AudioJungle.net, and Pond5.com. For more information about this podcast, please visit legendsofshield.com. Excelsior! I've been on a very... 90s grunge kick you know what i ran into this show that i had never seen before i thought i had uncovered all the stuff that i hadn't seen it's called time tracks and you, you watch I, that's familiar it's nope. like two x's right i think it's just one x with the tracks but maybe okay maybe yeah, two yeah. X. no it was just the one yeah it's kind of like a mash between quantum leap and time after time it looks like renegade I remember they used to show reruns on the sci-fi channel back in the 90s. Well, it was, it, I think it was 93, 94 or something like that. And it was square in a, it slotted in a time frame that I watched no TV whatsoever. They have a Super Nintendo game. Yep. Uh-huh. Ooh, Mia Sarah was in it. So the only way I know that you can watch it is to get a hold of physical media, because I don't think it's streaming anywhere. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't remember. It's not streaming for free anywhere. That's for sure. <laughs> anyway, I ran into that. I was like, huh. I thought I thought I had been God covered everything. I Ooh, guess not. Internet Archive has it. Oh, yeah? Oh, uh, no, it's no longer available. Never mind. Yeah, of course. Copyright probably took it down. Okay. Anybody see the uh, Aurora Borealis last night? Yes. I heard it was pretty spectacular in Chicago, in uh, Colorado. Yeah. So from like just the naked eye, it just kind of looked like very colorful light pollution. But when you brought out the night vision camera, it, uh, or the night mode on the camera, it looked amazing. I posted some pictures. It was spectacular here. Kind of hoping for, for another partial tonight or something like that but yeah last night was was pretty intense and it was really intense up at the lake i had to record with somebody last night and so i completely forgot about looking at the sky yeah it happens i watched all of bad batch i need to catch up oh i think it's stuck the finale
Yeah, I was pleased and a little bit disappointed at some things, but I was pleased overall. Yeah. Yep. Not going to spoil anything. Is Bad Batch a war or a track? War. War. A war. And unfortunately, there is so much history and lore ingrained in it. I think that's the detriment of Star Wars at this point, is that you find it difficult figuring out where you are in the timeline, and then you find it difficult knowing where everybody else of all the other things that you've seen up to date are in that same timeline. So when somebody makes a cameo or, or one episode appearance or integrates into the story, you're like, okay, where are they coming from? And what's going on with them at this point and everything like that. So it, it does induce a head scratching moment, but for the bad batch itself, they're really from the clone wars. So you don't really understand the whole depth of their story unless you watch all, what is it? Five seasons of clone wars. I want to say it's five, might be more seven, I think, including the net, the, the Disney episodes. Yeah. Okay. Netflix, Disney, whatever. Right. right. I'll start that right after I finish One Piece. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I've got to go to MIT this week, so anything you want me to tell those guys? Um, hurry up on the Ironheart stuff. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> Legends of S.H.I.E.L.D. is copyright 2013 through 2024.